Almost 60 years ago, Honda released this. This was the 1965 E300 generator. Now, way back then, this thing was cutting edge, and we've got this rare example today that we're gonna do a full review on and see what made this thing so unique. Generators were a brand new thing in the 60s and Honda wanted to be the leader. One of the ways you get there is attention to detail and good quality. A good example is this built-in nightlight. This thing allows you to use it after dark and you can actually see the controls. Even a lot of modern generators don't have anything like this. E300 can put out 300 watts of AC power or 12 volts of DC power, but it can't do them both at the same time. So when you flip this switch, Honda engineered a clever way to stop you from doing that. It actually closes a mechanical shutter on the outlet that you're not allowed to use. Two knobs in the front of the machine, starting with the engine on-off knob. Now that doesn't sound like a big deal, and it starts and stops the engine electrically, but it also turns the fuel on and off. And your second knob controls engine speed, and that's critical on a generator like this because if you go faster, you get more power out, and the reverse if you go slower. But with no digital gauge, how would you ever get the engine speed right to give you the right amount of power? Well, Honda had a really clever answer that involved a tuning fork. This little device here will actually vibrate to let you know when it gets to 50 or 60 hertz. You can see it in action right here with the lower white block vibrating differently than the others. The front cover is all steel and it's held on with a single thumb screw. Look at the inside of the machine, you can see how well they use the space. You've got your pull starter handle here along with your oil fill, but the way this machine is laid out, you've got your engine along with the part that does the electrical power itself. That's how a generator really works, it's basically just an engine connected to a motor that's spinning in reverse. When you were going to service this machine, you didn't even need to grab the manual. They put the sticker on the back that gave you all kinds of good information, the type of oil, how often to change it, and other specs about the unit. On the side of the unit, you'll see your air cover with your air filter, and you've also got your choke lever. When I took off the air cleaner on this generator, I found out the air cleaner was gone. Now you might have thought that somebody just forgot to put it in, but these machines love to eat them up. What happens is the foam inside gets rotten, broken down, and when you start up the machine, it gets sucked right in and burned up. So I wasn't surprised when there was nothing there, but I was surprised that I could still order an original Honda air cleaner. And most of these are ship dry and they need to have oil added to work correctly. So I used the original bag, added some oil, squeezed it around a bit, and now the filter is ready to be reinstalled. To take off this rear cover, you're going to be jealous that the generator you own today doesn't have some of these features. You've got this super cool holder for a spare spark plug along with two spare fuses. But how are you going to put that spark plug in? Well, fortunately, Honda thought of that too. They included a toolkit right inside the case. This is great because you won't lose it and you've got everything you need to change that spark plug. In fact, this plug inside was a little bit old, so I decided to order a new one. And again, I was able to get an original Honda part. And this is, of course, just an NGK plug reboxed for Honda. But what makes this plug truly different is the size. I've changed a lot of small spark plugs, but this thing is the smallest. When I put it next to a quarter, you can really get an idea of how tiny this thing is. Anytime you get an old machine like this, you definitely want to change the oil. Now the stuff in it wasn't 60 years old, but I wanted to swap it out. You'll also notice that the film mechanism on this Honda is exactly the same as their modern generators. It's pretty amazing that they haven't changed a thing, except that the dipstick on this one is metal and not plastic. And I could just dump out the old oil into a pan, but it's a lot easier to use something like this extractor pump and suck it right into the tank. Now just add the new oil up to the fill line and I'm ready to go. I'm using Honda 10W30. You could certainly use any brand of oil, but this thing is almost 60 years old and it certainly deserved its own brand of oil. Now we can start up the generator and I'm gonna follow the manual so that you know exactly what Honda intended. Begin by setting the AC-DC position to the correct choice. Now you're gonna set the frequency to 60 Hertz if you're in the US. Then turn your engine knob to on. And finally, you wanna take your throttle knob, turn it all the way closed, and then rotate it two positions to the open. So you're basically just giving it a little bit of gas. And then finally, you can go ahead and put your choke on, and you're ready to give it a pull. What you just saw is truly a miracle. This thing started on the first pull. Now if you go way back to the 60s, engines weren't that great. You could pull start your lawnmower a dozen times so your arm pretty much fell off and it wasn't a good experience. But I noticed one problem right away. My little frequency box there wasn't doing much of anything. Those little blocks are supposed to be vibrating when you get it to the right position. First thing I tried was this small LED light. It uses about 25 watts and when I plugged it in, it was working just fine. Nothing was flickering and everything seemed pretty good. Keep in mind the E300 can only put out 300 watts maximum, so this little heater was perfect to try a test. It uses about 250 watts. When I turned it on, heater was working, everything seemed okay. 
Now I wanted to really put it to the test, so I connected the E300 to my Tektronix power analyzer to see what type of power it was putting out. Now the engine was running absolutely amazing, but unfortunately these power numbers were not good. We were getting 163 volts out, harmonic distortion was at 27%, and our frequency was around 72 Hz, and that's not good. By lowering the engine speed, we got the numbers a lot better, but still not perfect. But back in the 60s, people weren't plugging in computers or any kind of sense of electronics because they just didn't exist. Here they'd be running something like a small hot plate or maybe an electric drill, and voltage like this would be just fine. The last thing I wanted to test was the sine wave itself, and when I put the meter in that mode, you can see it wasn't really looking very good. It doesn't look as bad as a modified sine wave, but this is definitely not super clean power. But sadly, my E300 still had one problem. That frequency meter just stopped working, and those tuning forks weren't moving at all. If you've ever had a stuck gauge or a dial, one trick is to tap it. So I decided to supercharge that idea by using this handheld massager. Now you can see how much they're vibrating, and at one point they're pretty much all buzzing, but unfortunately it didn't work, and the tuning forks pretty much fell out of the gauge. So I went to plan B to open up the part to see if I could fix it. The inside had gotten corroded, not really sure what happened, and I even tried to fix it using some replacement cork and reassembling it, but I couldn't get it to work completely. And Honda doesn't make this part anymore, but I did find one on the internet, but it was around 200 bucks, so it's not gonna be something I'm gonna order anytime soon. Now you can't tell from the video, but this thing is super well made. It feels like a little tank, and it should because it's almost 50 pounds. Now that's a lot of weight for a 300 watt generator, but back in the 60s, you must have been a king if you were carrying this thing around and could power something wherever you went. And I hope you liked this video, getting to see an old generator in action and something you may never have seen before. I've also put full specs in the description to this model, along with a link to the original owner's manual. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos coming up.